everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samiha Derde and I post video tutorials on Scratch. Please consider subscribing. I haven't been active on YouTube for a while now due to final exams, but now I'm back with another awesome game tutorial. So today we will be creating a circular maze in Scratch with levels. It's simple, fun and easy. So make sure to watch till the end and let's get started. Alright, so to start off first, I'm going to delete this original sprite and we'll choose a backdrop. I'm going to choose light. And now we'll paint a sprite which will be our circular maze, the most important part of the game. First, I'm going to choose this line to set the color to red, you could choose any. And we're going to zoom in so that we could see the pixels clearly. And now I'm going to hold down the shift key and draw a line about six pixels so we'll use this as a guideline for the spaces between our circles now i'm going to choose the circle tool set the color to black and we'll draw a circle to draw a perfect circle hold down the shift key and we have to make sure that our circle circle is aligned to the center which means the plus sign of the canvas should ma should match with the plus sign of the circle um so like this it looks good enough so what we're going to do is now I'm going to get this line I'm going to bring it up here so this could be a guideline for the next circle and now I'm going to get this eraser tool and erase part of our circle to be the opening so about that looks good next what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and duplicate this get the circle tool set color to black and I'll draw another circle So even this should be aligned to the center. Now we'll adjust the size to match the line. So about that it looks good. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this inner circle which we have here. I'm going to pull the line up. Alright and we'll erase a part of this anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the process once more, so I'm going to duplicate this and draw another circle. Okay, so now I'll erase a part here. That looks good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this inner circle and the line. Make sure to delete the line from all the costumes. Okay, so let's rename this costumes as 1, 2, and 3. Alright, so now let's move on to the code. Okay, so first we'll rename the sprite to maze. And for the code, what we'll do is when green flag clicked, we'll make it go to the center of the stage, which is x and y0. We'll make it show and we'll switch costume to one. And then from control, I'm going to create a clone of myself, which will basically be for rotating. From looks, we'll hide. And then we'll grab a when I start as a clone header block. Forever, we will turn right two degrees. Okay, so now let's test that out. Okay, so that looks good. Now what I'm going to do is from choose a sprite, I'm going to grab an apple. We'll size it down to about 30%. Make it, make it go to the center of the stage. And this will be our goal. Now I'm going to paint a sprite, which will be our home. For this, you could do anything. I'm going to draw a circle in green. Size it down and make it Make sure that it's at the center of the canvas. And on the stage, we want to place it um, on the right side. Make sure the Y is zero. Okay, so now I'll upload a sprite, which will be our ladybug, which I got from this amazing website, Game Art Guppy, which has pretty cool um, backgrounds, characters, and others. 
So from the characters, I'm going to choose this ladybug, which I've already downloaded. So we'll go to Scratch and upload it as a sprite. So I'm uploading the images, no shadow version. I'm going to first upload this bug one. Then we'll go to the costumes and upload the rest of the costumes. Okay, so we'll go to the code and I'm going to rename this as Beetle. It's pretty big now, so we'll size it down to about 8%. Okay, and for the direction, I'm going to make it point at direction 0. Okay, so that looks good. So when green flag clicked, we want to go to the coordinates of home, which is Y0. And for the X is 204. Okay, so I'm going to get a forever loop and an if then condition. So we want to check if the left arrow key is pressed. If it is, then we're going to change X by negative 4. I'm just going to right click duplicate this and change it to right arrow key pressed. Change X by 4. Okay, then I'm going to get another when green flag clicked. A forever loop and from looks, we're going to switch to next costume. And we'll wait 0 0.1 seconds. Okay, so let's test that out. Alright, so let's move it. We can move it back as well. Pretty good. Now, we'll do the if touching maze coding part later. Now when it touches the apple, what we wanted to do is we wanted to go to the next level. So let's code that first. Alright, so if it's touching apple, then we want it to go back to its initial position. The x is 204. And now what we'll do is we'll create a variable. I'm going to name it level for all sprites. All right, so here we'll change level by one and we'll broadcast a message level up. Okay, so we'll go to the maze and when going flat click, we want to set level to one and then we're going to get when I receive level up we'll create another variable and name it costume so when I receive level up we want to set costume to zero we'll go to the center of the screen we'll show and then we'll repeat level times. So repeat level. Change costume by one. We'll set costume to costume, the variable. Set costume to costume. Create a clone of myself and we'll hide. Okay, so now let's test this out. Okay, so when we go to the second level, we could see the first level is completely blocked. That's because a clone is creating a clone of itself. So to solve this, what we're going to do is we're going to clear all the clones before we go to the next level. Okay, so now I'm going to create a variable. We'll name it clear level. For all sprites and we'll go to the beetle so here when we're changing level by one we want to set clear level to one and in the maze when i receive level up we want to set clear level to zero and when i start as a clone here we'll get an if then statement so if clear level is equals to one We want to delete this clone. Alright, so now let's test that out.
Okay, so that's the first level, second level, and third level. Alright, great. So basically, we drew three circular mazes, so we have three levels. You could do as many as you want, but I'm going to stop here at three. Now, once we've passed the three levels, the game basically stops, so let's go for that now. Okay, we'll go to the beetle, and we will get an if-then statement. So if level is greater than three... We want to set level to 3 and we'll broadcast another message, you win. Else we'll broadcast level up. Okay, now I'm going to create a sprite. I'm going to paint a sprite of you win. I'm going to choose a background color. And using this text tool, I will I will type you win in the color green. Okay, and I'm going to make it bigger. Put it at the center of the canvas. Okay, so that looks good. For the X and Y, we're going to make it zero. Right, and for the code of this, we're going to get a when green flag clicked, we will hide. And from the events, when I receive, you win. We will show. Go to front layer and we'll wait two seconds, then we will stop all. Right, and then we're just going to stop all. So let's first test this out. Okay, first level, second level, third level, and you win. Great. Alright, so now when we play the game, the first level and the second level. So here you could see that all the mazes are moving the same direction and same speed. So we can randomize the movement. So let's do that. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two variables direction and speed now we're gonna hide all the other variables we just want level to be visible on our screen and then we'll set direction to pick random we want two values so one to two and we'll set speed so set speed so again we'll pick random make sure you put 1.0 and 2.0 this way you could get decimal values so here when i click you can see it's giving me decimal numbers and when i do this without the decimals you can see it's just giving me whole numbers for the speed we want decimals so make sure you put 0.0 all right, and then I'm going to get an if then else condition. So if direction is equals to one, so direction is equals to one, we'll make it turn right, speed degrees, else we'll make it turn left, speed degrees. All right, we'll put this inside the forever loop. And here you can notice there is duplication of code. So for that, what we're going to do is I'm going to remove this, starting from go to the center, and we'll broadcast level up here. Great, so now let's test that out. Okay, so... It's working. Now let's code the if touching maze part. So in the beetle here, I'm going to get an if then condition. So if it's touching maze, we basically want it to go back to its initial position, which is why 204. Great, now let's test it out. 
Okay, so I'm going to touch the maze. And when I touch the maze, you can see it goes back to its position. Okay, so now let's just add some sounds. So from these sounds, I'm going to choose a sound. So first I'm going to get a chomp. All right, and I'm also going to add another one, boing. Right, so here when it's touching the apple, we will start sound, chomp. And when it's touching the maze, we will start sound, boing. Great. Thanks for watching till the end. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a like. Any suggestions for future videos, leave them down in the comment section below. Subscribe for more amazing content and please follow me on my Insta at Samia Bye-bye.